Last week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we finally got a weather window to transit the Strait of Gibraltar. Boy, what a sight. Africa on one side, Europe on the other. It was one of the most amazing things we've ever seen. Good morning from Gibraltar. We have been here for uh, a day now, two days. This is our second full day. And um, yeah, we went into Gibraltar yesterday. We had a really nice cycle in, although then we had a quite a lengthy cycle around the uh, kind of industrial area trying to we got lost we got a little bit lost but anyway it was a nice little tour of, uh, of Gibraltar and uh, we eventually found the high street which was really nice very British it just felt like being back in the UK to be honest and today our plan was to go back into Gibraltar and go up the cable car to the top of the rock but uh, it's, it's been yeah covered in cloud all morning and swathed. it's swathed in cloud swathed. it's been swathed and so we're just kind of sitting here watching it we're hoping that it clears and we can go up but if it doesn't then we'll have to do it tomorrow obviously there's no point in going to the top of the rock if you can only see cloud so what else so nick's uh we're taking this opportunity to do some work nick is uh repairing the gel coat there's a little um kind of hole in the gel coat that he sustained apparently sustained in bermuda and I've been working on the internet. We've actually got really good fast internet here, which is a very pleasant change indeed. One thing that was super cool about cycling to Gibraltar or going to Gibraltar, because we're we're in the span, we're still in Spain. We're not in Gibraltar. We're across the border in Spain, so we have to obviously cross the the Spanish Gibraltar border. That's one thing. You go through like a little laneway and show your passports and and go through, and then you actually cycle across the airport runway which was awesome. Did you not find that really cool, Nick? Well, that wishing to kind of incriminate myself in any capacity. I thought that from a security point of view, it's really shabby. But they don't let anyone, they close all the gates and that when a, a plane is going to land or take off. Well, you think about, you think about UK uh, houses of parliament, right? Yeah. There are concrete barriers all over there. You know, there's always some lunatic ramming something. You could ram a plane in a, in a car there really easily. Anyway. Well, obviously there's not been any security incidents because the, the, the situation is what it is. <laughs> yes. Um, no, it was cool. Yeah, cycling across the runway was awesome. From a kind of visual perspective. Maybe not so much from a security perspective, but it's a bit sad that that's the world that we live in where we're just so preoccupied with, with that kind of thing. But anyway, we'll be here for a few more days and then we'll continue on our journey. But yeah, very much hoping we can get up to the rock either today or tomorrow. Meanwhile, Nick's made another mess. Yeah. Have you finished your gel coat repair job? Yeah, I just need to tidy up that. And can people expect a technical Tuesday about how to repair your gel coat? I, I hope they can, yeah. I'm just, uh, there's, um, obviously need to get it all finished to make sure it doesn't look like a dog's dinner. <laughs> Not much point in doing a how to if you can't yeah, do it. How to fuck up your gel coat. 101, yes. Now that would get some views. How to fuck up your gel coat. Well, we did that by mooring badly. <laughs> yeah. That part's easy. So, as you can see, or can you? Yes, you can. No cloud up the rock right now, so we're going to take advantage and uh, head up there. Hopefully we don't die from heat exhaustion. It's kind of warm.
Oh, that's crazy town. I know. I've got a new respect and uh, sympathy for cyclists, that's for sure. It's like some sort of fantasy obstacle course. <laughs> some strange Brompton based cycling game. It's definitely not a fantasy of mine. Really, I think that's what we're meant to talk about right now. I look like the woman in the red dress. Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> a sweaty, melted version of the woman in the red dress. Two adult returns. Two nature reserve tickets. The bad news is it's a four kilometre walk up there. Right. And you can't turn around. The 412 metres ride to the top of the box will take approximately six minutes. At the top station, you will have the opportunity of meeting the famous Barbary Ape. Uh, Please note these creatures are wild animal bone free and will bite if provoked. So please do not touch or feed them. Well, here we are from the top of the rock. So we went 600 metres up. Yeah. In uh, six minutes, as the cable car told us. Yeah. We have all this to see. It's The view is spectacular. I'm always a bit like, uh, is it going to be any good? It's yeah, the view is amazing. So this side we've got the Bay of Gibraltar, which is historically would have been an amazing thing to see when the, yeah. kind of the British fleet were in. Yeah. And then over that way it was the Mediterranean Sea. So it's all pretty amazing. Awesome. Uh, we're pretty impressed with this. We've just, we're a little bit pushed for time actually, because we've got to do it, we're doing, a, we kind of didn't set off till like half past one this afternoon and we've got to be back for six. It's now, it's taken us an hour to get up here and we've got four kilometre walk to. Thankfully, it is 15 degrees cooler here than it is down there, so yeah, we're very we should be right. Anyway, let's go and show let's you, go let's go and show you the rock of Gibraltar. I didn't realise this is what we were signing up for. This is going to freak you out. Yeah. Come on, you're a jazz bag. That one's cracked. See? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be some big bastard I got on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already done my button thigh workout for today. Not to mention riding or cycling for an hour to get in. Yeah, this isn't the laid back. Look at that. What, me? No, the stairs. Oh, who talking about me? No, never. Are we, are we braving it? No. Oh, okay. No. 
know where we are. Yep, come on, we got we got a route. We got we got some mileage today. Come on. All right. <laughs> oh look, he's going towards you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? He's scared. He's No, no. All right. That's pretty chilled. Yeah, until they attack you. Yeah. Maybe you should look at the map and I should do the filming. So my overall impression of Gibraltar. There you go, let's have a synopsis. But first I'm going to film this baby monkey. <laughs> So my, my, uh, my take on Gibraltar, I like it. I think it's a little bit too like an English seaside resort for me to really feel at home there. Not that there's anything against English seaside resorts. I spent most of my childhood growing up and playing in Whitstable and Herne Bay, which I love, but I still love Whitstable. Anyways, digression aside, this is beautiful. Historically, it's beautiful. As we said in our other video, link here, <laughs> uh, we went to the, uh, the Bermudan Naval Dockyard. That was, yeah. pretty, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. So it's obviously a huge naval thing from years ago. Um, and this is impressive, but um, it's a long way to walk. It is. It is. You know, this monkey, this, but I'm a bit scared of the monkeys. Yeah, I, I am as well. Uh, yeah. That's a badass m monkey. Actually, uh -oh. this is like one of those mad horror movies. Like <laughs> yeah, we're by ourselves. We're loads of people. We we've come, we've moved away from the group. Oh, no. We're loads of people and now everyone's we're disappeared. Alone. A cloud drops in <laughs> over and we're lost. Gibraltar. St. Michael's Cave. 40 meters to St. Michael's Cave. Oh, nice. There. So we get to St. Michael's Cave, it should go back round. Okay, so we're going down? Yeah. All I would say to you is that when we go down, we have a two mile, two kilometer uphill hike at the end of it. Yay. So we've got that bottle of water? Yeah. Oh, there it actually is a monkey behind me. Yeah, lemonade, please. So I'm sure this is a daily routine for these monkeys. They're all going batch invading the shop. Keep getting shooed out of the broom. <laughs> I am your leader. <laughs> Just realised that I'm actually not that comfortable with monkeys. <laughs> Hello. Well, there's our boat. Now we're just seeing monkeys as moving. What are you doing? Oh, it's nice and cool in here. I don't need to find a cave to live in. That's boring. I read somewhere that some they found a couple of homeless people living in a cave in Nottingham the other day. Oh. That looks quite sad. This is a concert venue. Huh. realize the cable car's about to go down. Come on, come on. Oh. 
<laughs> He's done that before. <laughs> and a woman one you love each other very much. Are they actually shaggy? Chicka pocka wow wow Chicka we're watching monkey porn live. It's like a peep show for monkeys. I think they're boy monkeys. Oh. I think that's why you're not meant to have plastic on you. That was really awesome. Well worth doing, wasn't it, babe? Yes, me who normally shuns everything touristy and says it's going to be rubbish. That was good. Yeah. Definitely worth it. So for top tip, come to Gibraltar to get up the rock. Yeah. In fact, there's only one thing to go and see in Gibraltar is that rock. <laughs> now we have to brave the, uh, the roads and the pedestrians and the planes and anything else to get back to the boat. So I'm quite enjoying using this little camera again. It's handy. I've got it. All right, so we think that we have a weather window to leave Gibraltar um, tomorrow. It's going to be probably, I don't know, 150 mile passage. Not entirely sure yet, depending on the weather. So we are going to the hypermarket, which is about a five minute cycle right, uh, right away. And we are going to provision, hey, um, for the next couple of days at sea. So Nick went by himself the other day to the hypermarket. He came back very, very excited. And I have to say, okay, obviously in America, you've got ginormous supermarkets and we were pretty bloody excited about that as well. But everywhere else that we've sailed in the last couple of years in the Caribbean and the Bahamas, obviously we just have those little mini markets. So the novelty of having these huge hypermarkets that they have in Europe, um, and of course the big supermarkets in the US, um, yeah, hasn't quite worn off yet. So we still get really excited by a well-stocked, cheap, supermarket don't we my love uh, do you know what i didn't think it was superbly cheap but did well, you not well stocked it is okay not superbly cheap it's not bloody walmart is it <laughs> i didn't think walmart was superbly cheap either walmart was incredibly cheap. No, well i mean here like I, I look at tomatoes tomatoes in europe can be like 50 cents a kilo that's superbly cheap you have to understand that europe is basically run on tomatoes I fully understand this. The same One of the many reasons we've come back to Europe <laughs> for the cheap tomatoes. Yeah, America runs on gasoline, doesn't it? And steak. So things that are cheap in America, <laughs> gasoline and steak. <laughs> I miss American steak. Ooh, I could do, do with a steak. <gasps> Babe, Hello. I found a place on TripAdvisor that has like really cheap and very, very good steaks nearby. Maybe we should go there for dinner tonight. feeling particularly shabby today, tonight, this evening, because I'm going out literally having just washed my hair, so my hair is very, very damp. But you've just stepped out of a salon. Yeah, no, because they make you look lovely. No, that's a joke. All right. Anyway, so whatever, I'm not letting that stop me. It's too warm to blow dry my hair, so wet hair it is. And we are going down to the bar to have a lovely celebratory drink before we set off for our next, next leg next leg tomorrow if the weather's good if the weather's good yep 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 perhaps even if it's not we're not set off in bad weather not in bad weather anyway i think we're waiting a while for the perfect weather window so we might just have to take what we got Next week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we get a weather window to make our first ever passage in the Mediterranean Sea. Unfortunately, the weather isn't perfect. We are going very, very slowly, and because of this, we are not going to make our destination before nightfall. So it's decision time. What do we do? Keep going or change course? Join us next week.
Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you like what we do and you want to see what we do every week, then please hit that subscribe button. Cheers, bye.